morning, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we welcome you to the second session of the biggest implantology event of 2020. My name is Ruben Lobo, and once again, it's a pleasure to have the very own Dr. Vivek Gaur, a person who known, who's known as the name synonymous when it comes to immediate functional loading implantology. Well, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday, Dr. Vivek Gaur spoke on Simpladen, and he spoke about the complete lineup and the beautiful products that they have been manufacturing, the kind of research and development that has been going on with regards to making the finest implants for everybody. Simpladent is known as the company which makes implants not only for the rich, for the poor, but for everyone. And that is the motto. And that is when Dr. Stephen Ede rightly says, for him, implantology begins when it's an end for everybody else. Once again, it's a pleasure to have all of y'all joining us live from various parts of the world. Very quickly, I want you to introduce yourselves and tell us from which part of the world you are joining us from. If you're joining us from Delhi, Mumbai, Calcutta, Bangalore, if you're joining us from the Middle East, if you're joining us from various countries in the Europe, if you're joining us from Northern Africa, please tell us from which country you are joining us. Hello, doctor from Afghanistan, to someone from New Delhi. Thank you to everyone who's joining us from various parts of the world. I'm sure this session is going to give you those tips and tricks, the much needed tips and tricks in immediate functional loading implantology. Once again, it's my honor and a privilege to introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Vivek Gaur. Very quickly, I would like to introduce our speaker. Dr. Vivek Gaur is an oral and maxillofacial surgeon based in Mumbai, uh, based in India, sorry. He completed his BDS from Manipal. Later on, he went on to in advanced implants from Manipal. He holds a diploma in advanced implants from college. He's a master clinician in implants and has done the same from UCA in the United States of America. He's done his master's in immediate loading implantology from the International Implant Foundation based in Munich, Germany. Later on, He's recognized as an international teacher of International Implant Foundation, which is based in Munich, Germany. Currently, he runs a private dental practice at Superdent Clinic, Radisson Blue, Delhi, India. He's been a visiting consultant and an implantologist in various dental clinics across India and abroad for immediate functional loading implantology. He's a mentor in courses in immediate functional loading implantology all across the globe. He's a keynote speaker mentor in various international and national conferences. He's got many publications under his credit. Over the last 17 years, I'm proud to tell you that Dr. Vivek has placed more than 18,000 successful implant cases. I think that is it. That is something that talks about the kind of work, passion, dedication Dr. Vivek has been going through and has been doing for the betterment of a patient's mind. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, presenting to you, Dr. Vivek Kaur. Hi, good morning everyone. Thanks a lot for being So I'm going to share my screen now. Yeah, now it's working properly, yes. So today my talk is on clinical tips and tricks for immediate functional loading implantology. Thanks for giving uh, the detailed uh, description about me, the introduction about me, Mr. Ruben. Uh, one more thing is that I am currently doing a PhD in Maharaj Vinayak uh, University in Jaipur. And what I have taken the topic, I have taken the topic where I have my studies going on and uh, I will be presenting of 100 cases 100 patients, not 100, 100 patients where you can do a severe, you can find out a single zygoma, double zygoma, a bilateral double zygoma, total four zygoma in a patient. So 100 patients I have taken and my study is because what size my specialty has become with the experience is placing a transsinal zygomatic implant with flap test procedures. When you do a little louder, Dr. Vivek, thank you. Okay, hmm. so whenever you do a flap test procedure, in flap test procedure, always we do a trans zygomatic implant. So that is the topic I have taken off for my uh, for my research work when I'm currently I'm doing as a as a uh, as a curriculum in uh, what uh, for the PhD what I'm pursuing. 
So this is going to be changed the subject when we do our sinus lift and everything. We, people are, uh, means I remember when I started the sinus lift with all the delayed loading, the sinus lift means sinus membrane was, maybe people used to scare a lot. We have to lift it very carefully. Of course, you have to lift it very carefully because we were needing, we were doing the augmentation procedures. But yes, it is not that scary the sinus because when you talk about the traumatology, in traumatology, we are actually, uh, we are splitting the segments, we are correcting the fracture cases, we are treating the fractures, and then we, at that time, we don't think about the, the sinus membrane. And when we are doing the orthognathic surgeries, this sinus membrane is like, we doesn't, we doesn't care about because we know, because sinus membrane is such a fantastic thing within six weeks, whether you, Rupture it or not, whatever I think is there, if it's not infected, it will just regrow. So it will repair. So, okay, leaving that part. Today, the clinical tip and text for immediate functional loading implantology I'm going to talk about. Please understand. Yesterday, I was speaking like a, like a representative of the Simplatin company. So I was talking more about the Simplatin implants. But today, I want to talk like a doctor. I want to talk like a private clinician. And here, I am not... Uh, focus on the particular company. Maybe I am sharing actually the dice and uh, the sponsorship has been given by Simplatin, but I am not going to talk about the Simplatin implants. I am going to talk about the science. And this immediate functional body implant logic, if you have the right knowledge, the skill, you can do immediate functional loading implant logic with any implant system, but you have to get the required or the needed armamentarium has to be there and the right design has to be there. So we go with the pioneers. The pioneers of immediate function loading are Professor Linkov, sir, Tremonte, Tremonte, I'm talking about the senior Tremonte, the Scorthic is sir, the Karat Noor. He is real, uh, he has really, really done a great work with the conventional design, the Karat Manor. And maybe in 2000, when he was publishing his work, he might have been criticized by the so called novel conventional guys but today his work he means people uh, uh, know, know less about him but whatever in conventional implantology you are doing a major functional loading implantology with the conventional implants it is all known because of correct manner only then we have a Gavasio, Graffelman and the Stephen Edison who has redefined the immediate functional loading implantology so what I want to say I want to say if you have the knowledge if you know that your target sites and the site or the operatory site, the bone quality and quantity, if it permits to place an implant with a high insertion talk, you can do immediate functional loading implantology with any of the implant system. Why we're doing immediate functional loading implantology? Because still the people are not understanding when you are placing an implant and leaving it for so-called healing, you know, uh, the healing will be there, the bone will be fall on the implant and then you are actually that implant in a state of disuse atrophy. And whenever the, you have the, mm, the micro strain is there actually for less than uh, 50 to 100 or, 50 or less than 200 micro strains are there, you are going to lose the bone rather than you are going to have a bone builder mm, or the bone grow will be there. But when you have, and then you have a steady state and physiological overload means still 4,000 of microns, you strains, you are going to have a bone opposition around the implant and you are going to have a laminar bone as fast as possible instead of the woven bone. If you are just placing the implant, leaving it, there's a full cascade of healing is taking place. First of all, the woven bone formation will be there. And later on, when the function is provided, then the laminar bone formation takes place. So if you do immediate functional loading implantology, if you do the function instantly and your implant is permittable to put to, or your knowledge is permittable, so that you can do immediate functional loading implantology, you are inviting a laminar bone as, as quick as possible to achieve the stable bone condition around the implant. And of course, above the 4,000 microns or the micro scales, when you are, that means you are overloading the system and it will create a failure that is called a pathological failures. And pathological overload means you are going to have a micro fracture around the implant. And this micro fractures, if it's going to heal, that is like a remodeling. When the micro fractures, if they are going to, it's a reversible process, then your implant will stay. Means you can correct the occlusion load and your implant is going to stay. But if this micro fracture turns out towards a macro fracture, then it's a no return position. Is there no return situation? Is there you have to take out your implant? It will be a complete failure will be there. So this is what is very important. 
when you say, oh, they have placed the implant, the implant got failed, I always say the implant never failed. The titanium doesn't know what is failure is there. It is the operator, the knowledge of the operator that and actually the, uh, the follow-ups has been not been done. This is create failures, okay? So, how our success depends on immediate functionality of implantology? We have to place an implant, we need a primary stability. Primary stability can be achieved, high primary stability can be achieved when you're going, going to place an implant in a mineralized bone. When a mineralized bone is there, the mineralized bone means you have the minimum of biological reaction will be there. I mean to say minimum biological reaction means a less of rebonding will be there and so called your also integration will be delayed. Because if you are going to talk about the also integration, you are practically dealing, you are talking about the delayed mode. This is clear, I want to tell you. And the spatial distribution of masticatory forces in congruence with biological trajectories means your occlusion scheme has to be like that. The forces that is going to be transmitted through the implant, the forces actually get transmitted clearly in the maxilla. <coughs> so when the forces are going to get transmitted, they should be in congruence with the trajectories. The macro trajectories are there, and macro trajectories are different type of the buttresses are there. So these buttresses I'm going to talk about later. These forces should, should coincide actually with the trajectory pathways, and then the success start for your immediate function loading implantology. Avoiders of cantilever, see the cantilever is an excuse. It is not a science. Cantilever is not a treatment. It is an excuse. Because you can't place the implant distally, you have a limitation to place an implant distally, you talk about the cantilever. If or maybe because of the implant come, implant systems are very costly, you want to save the money, so you go with the all in four, they go, now you started going with the all in three. But please understand, if you have, whenever it's possible, the available, uh, the bone condition is there and you can place more number of the implant, you always go with the more number of implant. It's a proven fact. We do the splinting, immediate after placing the implant, we do the splinting. Splinting means like a, when you're going to put a prosthesis, it is like a splinting, and splinting is reinforcement and the offset loading. Means whenever the little forces will be there, when the implants are splinted together, they are always going to have a success. And if the implant is angulated, placed, and you have a little forces are there, then you are going to create a failure for the implant. You should place sufficient number of fixers. There's nothing like no content indication is there and you cannot place more number of the implant. Whatever the people are at the back, they can laugh or you are placing more number of implant or the patient is not going to have a titanium deficiency. I call them a complete idiots because they have not learned the biomechanics of the job. In mandible, you can play around with the less implant, but for the maxilla, you have to place more number of implant, definitely. And when you talk about the maxilla and mandible, they always say the mandible implants are easy. You know, the mandible, the higher prognosis is there. The problem is the maxilla. For me, for me, mandible is a problem. Mandible is always surprising. Please understand when you're placing more of, you have done more of cases, you have a good number of experiences there, you will realize the mandible is always carry surprises. Maxilla, you have to redefine, you have to define buttresses are there. So I don't think so. In maxilla, you're going to have ever problem if you are applying the right knowledge. Tripod tripodization. Tripodization is very important. Means tripodization, if the, yeah, it's like a stool also. If you had a tripod is there, it is more stable. And to create a tripodization, we always place a staggered placement. Staggered placement means implants are not done in a in a, sink, in a like in a, in a linear way. They are placed implants in a different direction so that they resist the later forces. And of course, for us, it's always a graftless protocol because we are doing immediate function loading in plantology. Ossification, also integration. Now understand, please, also integration is a biological answer for ossification. When you place an implant, you're placing an implant at Tarigod in the zygoma, please don't start talking about the osseo integration. You know, osseo integration is going to take place after a year. Because osseo integration is a biological answer for ossification. The more the mineralized bone is there, the lesser the reaction from the bone and the delayed will be also integration. And if you're placing an implant on the cancellous bone, yes, of course, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> you can do a major functional implantology, but then you are here, you're achieving a fast also integration within four months, you're going to achieve it. But for me, we are talking about immediate functional loading implantology. So we know whenever you are going to place an implant, eventually 
in by the around the fixture you are going to have also integration will definitely happen but yes it depends upon the side depends upon the bone if you are going to engage in a highly windized bone like the buttresses like the corticals you are going to have a delayed os integration but who is concerned of the os integration you are placing the implant is dispinted and patient started chewing properly so this when the patient start chewing up properly in the later on follow up with the cbcts you can find out in the follow ups after one year two years that everything is perfect now you can see all around the mindrise or lamina bone around the implant and you can write an article also please what we mean to say the pillars of mid facial resistance are prepared to transmitting ascending direction what i have told you you know the buttresses are cranially placed they are directed cranially and hence they come to impacts of transverse and oblique direction it means in a simple terminology it means the implants when they are bearing axial loading actually they are always successful with the problem is the offset loading or the lateral loading and to maximize polygon in sagittal and transversal directions and reduce leverages and flexural movements to a minimum by placing by sufficiently equipping the jaws it means if you place more number of the implants and you are splinting them and you have placed the implant at the strategic sites means around the buttresses or on the corticals and the implants are not in a straight line they are staggered placement is there and they coincide in congruence with the buttresses or congruence actually with the trajectorial forces where the trajectories are getting transmitted cranially there you have a higher success will be there i was talking about the trajectories see for me maxilla it's full of buttresses is there like superior transfer facial buttresses there inferior middle <coughs> for the maxilla and we have the vertical buttress also available like zygomatic tergomaxillary and the nasomaxillary buttresses there and we're talking about the if the resection cases are there the rehabilitation of the post operative cases you have the central nasoacmoid buttresses here you can place an implant at the clavula and you can create a nasal prosthesis <coughs> i'm sorry or you have uh, the all the buttresses are available for the mandible you have only two buttresses are there like you have superior transverse mandibular and the inferior transverse mandibular buttresses so between the intermandibular foramen region you have a like the that is the same piece principle you have a highly mindless bone is there but if you go in the posterior only the base is available or the lingual cortical base doesn't mean the base of mandible it means the lingual cortical also okay so the base is available or the lingual cortical is available where you can engage the implant and you can avoid cantilever subjection so this is an example of a staggered implant placement you so uh, we we are so uh, means uh, we don't place implant in a straight direction okay tergoids are there zygomatic implant is there implant is there and the nasomaxillary buttress is also there implant engaging the nasal cortical is there okay and this is the yesterday also i have shown this picture i am just going to show this picture i am not going to talk the detail about this these all the cases if i had a if i had a lecture on the cases and lecture on the resection the rehabilitation of the resection cases i have a good number of cases are there we can lecture but this this is this lecture is based on the immediate full stroding implant logic so we are just showing it we just want i just want to show the trapodization what i talked about trapodization is like this is the perfect trapodization ever been achieved ever been has been done by um, by implants i was lucky and honored to done this case last year it was it was the first time ever been done it is like the placement of the implant in the pterygoids in the zygoma and at the engaging the central nasoacmoidal buttresses near reaching near the glabella this is the case what i did and this create a perfect trapodization and you know how i was able to do it because i got the right equipment i got the right technology i got the cortical basal implants that's why i was able to do it so if you give me this two implants me the bicortical screw the bcs implant and the zygomatic implant this implants these implants if i am going to have it i can treat any of the case any of the available case i can operate i can treat it 99.9% of the cases i can complete it because the single piece implant logic is there the bendable implant is there the body of the implant is of 2 mm or more than 2 mm thick is there so these implants are not going to fracture as they is been propagated i'm not going to talk in detail because there is a separate lecture is there 
when we counter the conventional implant design, when they have a two-piece design is there, and we know in two-piece design you cannot torque your abutment uh, more than 50 newton because this cloth, some flaring of the implant will take place. Okay, huh? We have a threads are there. The pitch of the thread is very important. The distance between the two threads are there. They are have a sufficient thread of around 1.5 to 2 millimeter minimum distance is there. You know why the distance is there to condense the bone between the threads. If you have a less distance is there, then you are not condensing the bone. Actually, you are separating the bone. You are just uh, you are not condensing between the between the threads. You are just condensing just around the implant. And yes, this implant engages the transmission of the buttress, the transmission of the forces taking place only on the apical threads. And these threads, on these threads, when the force transmission is taking place, so I am not having bothered with the crystal part of the bone or the crystal cortical or the alveolar bone or the alveolar cortical, the, the first cortical. And thus, actually, I usually I get bone opposition rather than bone resorption. For me, zygomatic implant, this is the perfect example of zygomatic implant because I know this zygomatic implant has to be placed along with the rigid fixtures, anteriorly or posteriorly, you cannot do place a single zygomatic implant and load a tooth on a zygomatic implant because of the leverages they have. <coughs> because of the placement, because of the spatial placement of the zygomatic bone in relation to the maxilla or relation to the elbow ridge, where the force with the maxillary force transmission is required. So these are the implants that zygomatic implants are engaged and they need to be along with the rigid fixtures either anteriorly or in the posteriorly. But they, they are very good if you want to widen the polygon means if you want to resist the lateral forces. This is a very popular picture is there even we, we have taught more than 100 dentists, 100 speakers Right now, is there in India talking about the cortical base implant? Everybody is going to show you these pictures. These are like the red, the orange is like the cord, these the terribles are there, the third cortical is there, red is the maxi flow. The sinus flow, you don't engage it, nasal cortical engages between the intermentaphoral region. You don't have to engage any of the cortical, these bodies are really condensed. Posture of the mandible, either you engage the lingual cortical, buccal cortical, or the base of the mandible. I'm going to show you that. And of course, we have the floor of the orbital ring. Floor of the orbital ring, you can engage it. You can go to the literal floor of the orbit, literal aspect, not at the middle aspect. This is very thin. You have uh, one more region is there. Uh, this is called central ethmoidal complex is there. You can just place the implant there. The buttress is there. The zygomatic bone is also there. Methodology. I will show you, I will tell you this is a picture is there. So, how we do it, does it for me? It is like we always routinely place 10 to 12 implants in the maxilla and 8 implants in the mandible. How we does it? Usually we do single pterygoid or the double pterygoids. We have matured ourselves to place with triple pterygoids also. It, they had uh, importance is there. And yours in this anterior region, pre maxilla region, we are engaging the nasal cortical. For the mandible, we are engaging between the two mental foramen, between the mental foramen region, we are engaging four implants. They are just condensing the bone because you have highly mendized zone is there and in the posterior if you if you have the uh, the height is available above the inferior canal means if you have on three to four meter bone is there above the inferior canal you have a sufficient myeloid undercut is there very stable undercut where you can engage the implant blow and engage the lingual cortical so this is how it goes that's uh, our scheme is there i'm going to show you that's of course we do the after the extraction were required, otherwise we do the flapless procedures. This is the metal to acrylic prosthesis. You can go metal to ceramic, you can do metal to indirect composite. I have never done with the zirconia, I will never do it please, for the full mouth rehabilitation. So how it does it? This is all sanitary processes there, okay? Uh, they talk about, oh, the food impaction will be there, everything will be there, because those who talk about the self in the, these processes are not, uh, you cannot clean the processes because these people have, forget actually what they have been taught in the first year videos or the second year video maybe the, the professor didn't teach them it is like that the protocol is in the i remember till in second year what i have been taught never can deliver but the Dr. Vijay, always give, yeah yeah sorry to disturb you uh, participants i want to ask you are you able to see the screen if yes please type yes Participants, I request you to kindly type yes if you are able to see the screen. 
thank you so much please continue dr vivek thank you okay so uh so we uh we when we talk about uh what we were taught in the second year bds it is like that always the posterior when you are going to do a fixed partial prosthesis the contact has to be sanitary in the anterior you can create a modified ridge lamp but the posterior has to be sanitary this is the scheme you are going to follow your patient never going to have any problem hmm okay now i started so this is the process is there Elevate. Hmm. Now that's a double pterygoid implant placement. Okay, that's the implant placement done in the pterygoid. As you can see, between the intermental foramen region, what we are doing, we are just placing the implant. We are not hanging any of the cortical because perforating the lingual uh, cortical at the between intermental foramen region. When we are operating a flapless procedure, there is a chances there to have a lingual uh, hematoma. Okay, because there is a lingual anastomosis is there. At the posterior region, you are, you can just engage the implant, place the implant threads below the bilateral undercut, and that's how successfully you can do it. <clears throat> As a nasal cortical engagement, we are placing the implant. We are not placing the implant in the nose. We are engaging the implant in the nasal cortical. Please understand. So that is actually the post-op was there, and or I think this was a follow was there. Okay. Hmm. Now we go actually see this was the this is how we do the image function loading in plantology. Now, if you have the available width of the bone is present, you can use your conventional implant also. You follow this technique because if you go with the literature and the publication by Professor Karak Manov, he has defined the techniques of lingual cortical engagement, he has defined the technique of buccal cortical engagement, he has defined that I'm talking about the mandible. He has now for the maxilla, he has defined the technique of transpalatine implant placement. Okay, he has defined or paranasal implant placement, parasinusal -sinus implant placement. He has defined all the techniques. He has defined, he has used the pterygoids, he has used the zygoma. Okay, this was the system he has used, and he was never shy enough to place less number of implants. He was always placing more number of implants. I don't know how actually, whenever the commercial things start up taking over. The knowledge, the main, the drawback, I mean, the sufferer are the dentists, the youngsters up here. So now it looks like a very simple case. Come on, why I'm going to show this case? We did the double pterygoid routine cases are there. So why we are able to place that? Why I'm showing this case? Because please understand, this is a knife edge max slice there, and the mandible also like that. Now, if I'm having a conventional design is there, means my implant is there at the first cortical level. At the first cortical level, my implant is a white fixture is there and it's getting tapered like a root form implant is there. I am not able to place any of the implant here. I have to go with the grafting procedures and I'm talking about a female who is through like 60 or 70 years plus, okay? You can do the grafting procedure. I can't convince my patient to do a grafting at that age, okay? So this is the uh, this is a condition, and how I was able to place the implant. You see, I did my parietal, my upper, my insertion was from parietal aspect, and I engaged the nasal cortical. Basically, I was engaging the implant where the fusion of the parietal cortical and the nasal and the nasal cortical was there, nasal floor was there. Okay, that's a perfect engagement is there. So you can see we have done the case. Now in the anterior also. In the anterior, we are placing, you can see how the knife edge ridge is there, and we are placing the implant. Because of the design of the implant, I am able to do it. The body of the implant is only two millimeter. So I always I am going to have a bone around two millimeter at the, at the crystal level. I can do it. They say no, I can do the alveoctomy. How much alveoctomy you can do it? Okay. You cannot take out the 75% of the bone to do the alveoctomy. Okay, it's like there are the few cases are there you can do the alveoctomy because there's a uh, like a pyramidal shape of the alveolar resorption is occurring and later on it is not a pyramidal shape it is like it literally it becomes a knife edge which is up here so this is how i completed the case check out the aesthetics you know when you place an implant the posterior you are not doing any soft tissue grafting you know you just if you are intelligent enough and you know how to place an implant you know how the bio biomechanics is going to work of the jaw because hard tissue soft tissue follows the hard tissue you are going to get always a nice aesthetic will be there after two years of the follow-up 
you can see the stains and everything is there uh, there is a resorption is occurring some uh, resorption of the of the of the bone has occurred in the mandible but check out the position of the maxilla check out the anterior section of the maxilla you are always getting a a, a stable uh, gingival biotype is there in the maxilla of course in the mandible whatever the grafting procedure you are intended to do mandible is having in the anterior region the centripetal resorption so it always resolve because this is how the bone is going to get function so buccal cortical always get rid away in the anterior of the of the mandible of course now when you have uh, the atrophic course cases are there you can do the bypass okay this is i have done with the flap you can do you this i have done with flap plus you can do with the flap also no or uh, there is nothing like that you are you are supposed only you are supposed to do with the flapless procedures you can do with the flap also that's a that's a pre op procedure that's how we bypass the implant we bypass the implant buccally buccally there is always at the second molar region you are always have suffi sufficient spaces available sufficient bone is available medi or the, sorry the vestibular to the inferior buccal canal you can place an implant and get the base this is how we have completed okay you see the idea of the idea of the of the implant how i have done it and this is the and the lower okay and posterior you can see how nice this implant has went straight and engaged the base of the mandible <clears throat> the prosthetic scheme i have created posterior sanitary is there anterior no contacts are there in canine to canine posterior i have given the limb lens occlusion come towards the pterygoids pterygoids is very important if you want to avoid the cantilever understand this picture you are going to get this picture in detail because we have written good number of articles they are under review when they are going to get published i have written in detail about the pterygoids i have written in detail about the transcranial placement of the zygomatic implants also uh, articles i have written and when they will be published i am going to share it definitely you are going to get good number of articles in www.simpladent.in again i am saying www.simpladent.in there is a section is there of the pterygoids so sorry the section is there of the publication all the articles have been posted and the, all the publications are, are there free of course you can download you can read it so this is what what is the importance of a pterygoid now i just want to tell you one more thing again i say yesterday also i told again say whenever your speakers are talking about the pterygoid because now everybody talk about the pterygoid implant when i started showing the pictures in 2010 the pterygoid i i been taught actually by professor ide sir and they were doing the pterygoid from 2000 onwards but yes when i started talking about the pterygoids in 2010 they because the cities at that time if you if you see the opg in opg it used to feel like that pterygoid implant is not in the bone it is like in a soft tissue and all the legendary figures of indian and abroad when you used to post the picture in facebook they used to say where you have placed the implant this implant is soft tissue and today these people must realize whatever the statement they have done because they were not taught properly or their knowledge was limited that's why they were talking all about this thing the implants in the pterygoid when we are doing now other speakers when they talk about the pterygoid implants tell them please don't use the word pterygoid implant because with the conventional implant pterygoid implant is impossible you have to play you have to say tubero pterygoid because they are engaging the tuberosity also and then you are achieving the pterygoid implant so this is called a tubero pterygoid implant it is not called a pterygoid implant pterygoid implant means when you are not taking any support from the alveolar process or from the maxillary tuberosity and only you are taking support from the pterygoid so you see this how a highly atrophic case was there was able to manage to place the ten implant today i will do the zygomatic implant also no problem i also have a larynca so this is how we have done it this for the pre op post op and that's the follow up started this was case was done was in uh, mm, this case was done in 2016 july mm. and the last follow up i did it was of in 2018 okay so you can say the still the means 16 now now your four year post op cases there these are the cases these are the cases i operated in mumbai and these are the cases this cases they've been rejected by all the uh, experienced implant lawyers and i was lucky to uh, to uh, lucky to operate such cases and and the patient is happy so this is the uh, uh, this is the case follow ups are there okay 
Now, we talk about a triple terabyte. There you are seeing the double terabyte implants are there. But if you if you have sometimes it's going to be there if you know how to place a three terabytes, three implants in a terabyte of a physis, it is very advantageous. And when you're operating in a resection cases, it's really advantageous. So this I will just show you. This is a recently picked uh, case we did it in before the when the lockdown started before this COVID has started. We are right now. We are resting our techno. We are resting our techniques. We are resting actually our uh, tactile sensation. Uh, we are not operating. We are not operating very in a limited manner. But yes, those were the days that we are. I was placing the implant 200 or 200 implants in a month, and without any question, we used to place triple terabytes of the double zygomas. So this is a case, and you can see I did a triple terabyte. I am consulting here on the triple terabyte, but you can see other aspect. I have done the double zygoma also, and this is done. Flapless. You can see there's a flapless placement is there. Triple terabyte, double zygoma, triple terabyte. So here we consider the triple terabyte and the double zygoma. This is again I'm saying when you have tuberosity is there, you can place two, two implants also in a terabyte, and you are going to get tubero terabyte implant because you have a conventional design. Any design will be there, like a root form design will be there. So you have to be placing tubero terabyte implant, but when you talk about the terabyte implant, you are not taking support any of the tuberosity of placement terabyte implant. And because we guys are dealing with atrophic cases, and every day we redefine the atrophy. Every day, actually, like today I've operated a case, I say, oh, it was really atrophic case. And I'm so lucky the next day or within a week, I'm getting an atrophic case, which that is going to be more complicated situation rather than the earlier case we are operated. So we daily we redefine the atrophic cases. And this is actually when you doesn't have any tuberosity, only the, the implant that is called the BCS implant is available where you can solve the problem. Mm. Zygomas, and zygomas, lots of zygomas have been taught about and they are good about our, uh, the speakers are there, they are doing a wonderful job in the zygomas. I am not so uh, experienced in zygoma. I have done, started the zygomatic implants in 2014, my first implant was there. But I'm experienced enough to tell you that I have a record means I've done more than 150 or around 200 zygomatic implants already have been tested. I mean that 100 zygomatic implants are going to come in my study. We have done it actually within, I can say, I started the study last year in, in July onwards and by March, uh, by March before the lockdown started, we already completed 100 cases of the zygomatic implant. Here you are going to talk, here you have, you should know, when you're doing a flapless zygomatic implant, you are talking about the transverse facial artery. This is the artery you should be carrying, transverse facial artery, when you're operating actually the flapless procedures. Now I'm going to talk with the flap, flap procedure. This flap actually, there's a cases there, such type of the cases, we doesn't have any competition, no, 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 uh, no interview is, is there, actually you have to give your interview to a, uh, to a doctor who is calling you as a consultant because they know only you can solve it. Uh, otherwise, uh, this patient is there, you are not able to, able to operate. So this is the cases are there. That's a lucky case are there for me. And this is like double terabyte, senti implant, as a cortical engagement, and the and the zygomatic implants are there. This middle two conventional implants are there. This is not my case. This is not I have done. I have not done it. Okay. The staggered placement. Implant placing at the zygomatic, it's when it's splintered with the anterior or the posterior implant, these implants are so perfect, they resist the lateral forces. This is how we have done it. The bending of the implant, you can see after bending of the implant, you can, you can make the implant as close to the ideal position of the implant along the ridge. Okay. So there is no parental emergency there. Then you can bend the implant. So you can see how the atrophic and what was the atrophy was there. We restored the cases. We have restored the case. Okay. And that's a follow-ups are there. Then you do, we talk about the transcendence implant placement, the flapless procedures. These are the flapless procedures are there. They're going to operate, you can see. And this is how I do my osteotomy. Then we place the implant and we bend the implant. So after bending the implant, after making the implant bendable and coming to a pro desired prosthetic direction, nobody can say that this is a zygomatic implant. They think it's like a pre implant. Okay? You can see how neat and clean the surgeries are there. And it is not done in general anesthesia. It is done in infiltration. And 
patient has been taught, yes, yeah, we will be placing an implant in the, some very good bone is there that is below the eye and it's a good bone is that's why we are placing the implant. We are not exaggerating the situation. We are placing an implant in the zygoma. We are placing an implant in the terrible No, we doesn't say like that. We are very, uh, we tell the procedure to our patient, inform the procedure to the patient. These are the procedures are there. We engage terrible zygomatic and it's a routine procedure is there. It is not a complicated surgery is there. Okay, so you are not supposed to pay anything extra. It is needed, that's why we are doing it. If you want to pay, you have to charge patients from extra. What you do, you started exaggerating the situation. Oh, we are placing terrible, we are placing zygoma. It's not for us, okay? Which is just like a routine cases are there for us. This is a implant, we have done it. That's a case is there. That's a zygomatic implant, okay? You can see how it does a transcend displacement. So how this we complete the case and the follow-up was done in 2000. Okay. Now, you can, if you are placing any implants in a segment, it is very practical because seg in full mouth cases, we are achieving the rigid, uh, we are having a cross arch stabilization, but in the, in the segmental cases, if you place an implant, zygomatic implant, what you achieve, you achieve the implants, the stability against the literal forces. So that was the case was there. And that's how I done it. The zygomatic implant, done it. So you can see. Terrible zygomatic. In the end, I have done a BSSX implant. Like it's a, I need a more stability. So whenever you are placing a zygomatic implant, does it, around the zygomatic implant, you need a more stable implants because longer the implant is there, it is going to be more elastic, more isoelastic implant. So you need a rigid fixtures around the implant, around the zygomatic implant. Please understand. And you can do a flapless double zygoma implant also. You can see actually. It's now what I was talking about. If you do a triple terrigoid implant, maybe you do not need it, the double zygoma in this case. You can see, if I do the triple terrigoid, you are not needed double zygoma. But okay, that's how we do the double zygomatic implant, flapless, and we bend it back implant. Another case is there where you can use the implants as a rescue situation where the, your guy or you are, you are not able to do the terrigoid or you, are, you have come to save all your colleagues so you can just do the double zygoma implants when the terrigoid is already matched up. Uh, recent case I did it, you can see how the condition was there. In this case, because in the right of max, in the right of the zygomatic implant, there were the bone plates and screws were there. And when I do the flapter zygomatic implants, I go parallel, I go medially parallel actually to the to the to the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus. So so that's why I did the engagement at the zygomatic arc because here the screws are going to interfere of my placement of the implant, of my trajectory of the implant. Zygomatic implant when I'm going to do it. So you can see it looks okay, but this is the left zygomatic implant as routine, a perfect placement. But this is a specialty, the right zygomatic implant. It's here I've engaged at the zygomatic arc. So this implant may engage by uh, distal or the lateral to the zygomatic bone, but at the zygomatic arc. Segments go now. We all talk about it. these guys doesn't do the segments. I maybe actually these implants are not practical in the segments. No, sir. Segments we do it. Like you can see the two like the very old cases we have did it. Now I'm lucky actually I'm not able I'm not getting the segmental cases. But yes, after COVID, right now I'm doing this. Uh, if I'm going to get the segmental case, I have to do it. You know. Mm. Because you cannot sit uh, idle in the clinic and you can just wait for the full mouth cases. So these are the implants are there. We did the segment. A follow-up is there. You can see how the staggered implant placement is there. And that's how uh, it, it, it's successful, you know. Like this reason, you take out the third molars and place the implant. It's like that. This is how you do the segmental cases. This is an aesthetic case I showed yesterday also. I'm just showing because maybe the yesterday few of the parchments were not there. And today, if they are there and they say, come on, these guys doesn't have, they don't do the anterior cases. And anterior cases, we do the multiple grafting procedures is there, one zone, two zone, kidney tissue grafting. And we guys knows how to do the aesthetic cases. So this again, I'm repeating the aesthetic case, what I've shown you. This is a nice aesthetic I have created. The fracture, the traumatized patient was there. And that's the final result we have graded after more than one year, how we did it. We have, we, that was a fracture case was there, included literal incisor was there, we did the extrusion orthodontically, and then 
I did the socket shield, place the implant. The funny part of the socket shield is, you know, the speakers who, you talk, who all talk about the, uh, the one zone grafting, two zone grafting, corrected tissue grafting, they are doing it. And these same speakers, after a decade, they all talking about, they started talking about the socket shield. Guys, there was some problem was there. If your grafting was so successful, so what is the need of a socket shield? Because whatever the grafting procedures you do, there's always a collapse of the graft field definitely will be there. That is the bone biology is there. So that, and when you have a stable bone is there, when like a, why we're doing a root membrane? Root membrane is attached to the lamina bone, that's why. So you are not going to have any collapse. So that is now we all do the socket shield procedures. That is actually the, maybe uh, a few days after, okay, these cases are there. And this I'm going to show you the follow. You can see the follow. The shield is always already there, and that is the follow. It's a follow more than half a year. That is the follow. I've got it. Okay. So there were only I didn't change the processes. No temperature were there. It is the process. The crown has to be there like that. That it should not give uh, means it should not give create blanching actually on the soft tissue. The soft tissue should creep along the margins of the apartment, along the margins actually of your crown, and that's, you always create a, a nice aesthetic, you're going to be, achieve it. And there should not be any interferences around the implant, you know, when the change cycle is there. So what is my takeaway point? Because we have 15 days, 15 minutes are there actually for to solve the query, so to answer the question. So what are takeaway points? Takeaway points, points are, always restore the vertical dimension. No anti contacts in circular bases. Circular bases mean horseshoe bases are there. For full mouth, prefer lingual secretion. For single arch, circular bases, when you have the opposite, your natural teeth are there, prefer the group function. For posture segments, canine guidance, if you have the canines are there, no, natural teeth are there, and the posture implants are there, you have to create a guidance, you know, so, so you can prefer the canine guidance. Canine guidance is the most practical guidance. And is the most uh, means uh, the maximum uh, patient you're going to have is of canine guidance only. Atrophic cases prefer metal to acrylic or composite. Why? Because atrophic cases, even you have done with the with the uh, with, a, uh, with a gothic cast tracing, but this centric is always getting variated. The patient because you are talking about the kinesiology also. The patient is habitual of of is having a. Uh, prior habits are there, so the jaw is always moving around and the mandible always want to move around. Mandible doesn't, doesn't want to get restricted. So you, if you have some material is there, that is you can self-correct or you can correct it intraorally. And these are the materials are there, that's, that's getting, this encourage wearing. It is very practical thing is there. You are not going to traumatize the condors and you, when the material is going to get wear, the occlusion material is going to get wear. It is a it's it is a basic of a success story. Okay, and I have never done with the full mouth with zirconia. Will never attempt. And always accept the failure, share the success. Means when a failed case is there of mine, it is only because of way God have operated, and the failure is only because of way God. But when I am having a success, it was because the patient was good, the operative setup was good. I was lucky also that time I was placing nicely, and my doctor was also good, and every all the my staff was also very good. Yeah, but when the failure is there, it's only because of you. And when the success is there, it's all shared by everyone. So if guys, if you want to come to the next level, we are having a diploma in immediate loading is there. And uh, this is like in Maharaj Vinayak Global University, Jaipur, India. You are going to have a diploma from the Maharaj Vinayak Global University. And you're going to have a, a master certificate from the International Plant Foundation in Germany. And it's a five module session with there with the legendary doctors are there and in that four are the PhD doctors are there okay, who are going to teach you. So again I say we compete when others have given up. Jayant. Uh, this is how sir what is your opening about the XLBL implant. I, I don't know what is XLBL implant. Maybe you are talking about the white uh, the white apartment implant. So I always prefer the white apartment implant. Uh, uh, I am Dr. May. What is the success rate of immediate loading functional implantology? 
the success story is the implant always prefer the bone always prefer the medial function loading and any of the implant fixture if you are going to play if you are going to function more than one year and the secondary rebonding or after two years the secondary rebonding has been stabilized so you are going to have the secondary mineralization has been stable has been stabilized you are going to have the life lifelong the implant will be there but the thing is what the implant you are using this why i'm using a smooth surface implant then i am really assured because even if there is a crystal bone resorption occur i am not going to catch up my implant is not going to catch up any peri implant it is so this implant is going to be higher success rate when you are going to compare with the conventional design you say no i am having a lots of latex of the conventional design guys these single piece implant log is started in 1940s and 1950s okay so we are going to go with a single piece implant log you are going to get a much more follow ups and the follow up depends on the occlusion and the right technique if you don't know about the if he doesn't have a it doesn't have a proper knowledge of the occlusion then whatever the implant you do you are going to have a failure if we play mineral first man we play bone graft and can you do a mineral cow yeah you can do it actually because if you are going, if i am placing an implant and if i have a higher stability is there you are means uh, you are achieving immediate functionality you can give a immediate crown and if you talk about the jumping space please understand if you do a wide body implant and the space is there uh less less than 2 mm you don't have to place any graft protein also okay. any graft complex ergometric implant is there uneasiness in the patient yes the there is patient always uh, complain of patient doesn't complain you always inform the patient you are going to have a, some mm, mm, uh, you are going to have some uh, uh, the the communication will be there the liquid is going to come out or the blood is will be going to come out actually from the nose and later on after two max after 48 hours it just recover everything okay and just get close so i don't think so i have achieved i had any zygomatic implant complication but if the complication is there you have to treat the sinus routinely and how you have to treat the sinus first of all send your patient to a doctor who who the good actually uh, the ent surgeons who have already deal with the implants in there in the sinus or the zygomatic implant there in the sinus because the patient is not actually having the problem when they are getting scared by the other practitioners and the uh, proper knowledge or proper uh, information is not given to them and that's how the ruckus has started otherwise if the sinus is non infected sinus knows only one thing that it is going to close down which material is used is used for full full for it. which material is used full for implant Uh, if you are talking about the prosthetics, the prosthetic I always prefer metal to indirect composite or metal to direct acrylic. But in the young patient, you can go with the with the ceramic also. Mm. Uh, uh, which op option better whether to go for the ridge augmentation? Mm. Which whether to go with the ridge augmentation, normal dental or directly or zygomatic implants? Uh, for me, zygomatic and tergoid implants are perfect. Uh, can we fix implant or puncture broken steel in an accident? And first thing is maxilla got cracked on the near side, ma'am or uh, achilla, ma'am. Okay, achilla. See, please understand. When you are talking about the anterior section, in anterior you are not patient, you are not placing an implant, you are creating an aesthetics. So anterior cases are the toughest cases you are going to deal. So when the anterior is there, you follow what? First of all, the bone buildup has to be there because the patient has come for the aesthetic, patient has not come for the implant. So you have to follow the protocols. It is not like that. Graftless pro protocol is going to function everywhere. No, you have to go. First of all, you have to deal the situation. How the the volume, what the volume of the bone is missing. You have to create the bone volume by maybe the heart tissue grafting, and then you place an implant. There are the cases are there with the multiple resorption of the graft has occurred twice or thrice. Then there is no need to go, and you can just do the graftless protocols. What happens? So for me, actually, in the anterior cases, I prefer replacing a tooth rather than an implant. Rather than going, I am not placing an implant in the anterior section. What I want to tell you in the aesthetic section, I am placing a tooth. I am replacing a tooth. So to replace a tooth, you have to create the zenith. You have to create a jugulum and everything. Uh, please explain segment case little more in detail. Segment cases, what you should do, you should place more of the rigid implants. This is the key of survival. Is there any sinus perforation? Of course. What is sinus? I don't know. It's always perforation. It's always trans sinus. I'm doing. And when I'm doing a double tergoid, triple tergoid, it's all trans sinus. So always the perforation is there. Can you bend? Can you implant natal for any connection? 
uh, after fixing of the processor, I don't know you are also willing to bend the implant. Okay. Mm -hmm. But yes, you can bend the implant. Mm -hmm. Which parameters are evaluated for successful image loading implants? Which parameters are evaluated for the successful image loaded implant? The parameter is that your implant is not mobile, your implant is functional properly, your process functional properly, and the patients are not having any issues at all. And you are not having any crystal bone resorption. And because if you are going to have the resorption at the apical area, that means if your implant is also mobile. So what for me the parameter is there is no mobility around the implant. Okay. Do you prefer occlusion loading or not? Sir, I'm talking about immediate function loading implantology. It's all occlusion loading. Okay. Mm -hmm. Zirconia is not indicated full mouth. Sir. For me, actually, none of the zirconia, zirconia is indicated for the full mouth cases. In which cases do you go for immediate loading? Always, all the cases, I go for the immediate loading. There are the cases are there where I cannot do the immediate loading is where the grafting procedures are needed. So in that case, I cannot do immediate loading. To implant the anti-matter for anti-retained mandibular dementia, opposite conventional medicine denture, it works. Yeah, yeah, it works definitely, and I do with the immediate loading. But why not to place four implants instead of the in, instead of actually the two implants? Because uh, you have to find out the companies also whose products are good and they are not so expensive like what I get, you, what I'm getting from simple radio dental. And if you go actually with a very expensive implant, what is happening actually? You are placing a implant you are not doing the right treatment for the patient and if you place more number of the implant then you are doing the right treatment for the patient it means you the two more implants in there it creates a longevity uh high service has said more flapless of course flapless procedures is the best procedure because you are respecting regional extractive phenomena okay you are not you are not inviting the crystal bone resorption Can we perform basal against who has multiple minor and not on bifurs for the chemo three cells one year? Yes, you can perform it and you have, yes, you can operate. And for the biophosphate is not what we taught till now. Hi, Ruchir, I know you. The biophosphate is not a absolute contraindication. It's now I'm saying it's a relative contraindication. It may be absolute contraindication for the mandible, but not for the maxilla. You, you just have to get a CTS protein evaluation done. And then you can place an implant. And if the biophosphate has not been done for the last, like, we've not, uh, like eight months or nine months, if there is the patient has not taken IV biophosphate, you can go in, but you can just get the, uh, the, the, the level of the CTX proteins. The CTX I'm talking about. Thank you, Ruchi. So I think I'm done. Uh, thank you. The, I'm really, really thankful to the, OK, one more question is there. Impact of lateral force on the succession of pterygoids, I don't know, sir, you are not placing an, you are not placing a single crown on a pterygoid. You're not placing a single crown on a zygomatic implant. Pterygoid and zygomatic has to be splintered with the anterior rigid implants. So that's how zygomatic and pterygoid implants resist the lateral forces, and they are not good in resisting the axial forces. Uh, so uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Siddiqui and Mr. Rubin Lobo. Uh, it was a wonderful platform to share my uh, cases in dentistchannel.online. I'm very thankful to you and I wish you a huge success. Thank you, doctor. Friends, I request you to kindly wait for a minute because uh, we just just one minute. Actually, the professor Edison is going to speak on 25th uh, about the perimplantitis. Okay. Thank so you so much. About the perimplantitis. So you just the perimplantitis myth will get clear when you're going to hear the doctor's ADSR lecture because before osteointegration things have started, there was no peri-implantitis. Thank you.